Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sujit, medical oncologist in the thoracic cancer management team. In this session, I am going to talk to you about what is new in lung cancer 2021. We will discuss the preventive aspect changes and also what is new in treatment. In March 2021, the United States Preventive Screening Task Force has amended its recommendation for lung cancer screening. The current recommendation is any adult from 50 to 80 years who have had 20 year smoking history, 20 pack year smoking history and currently smoke or have quit within 15 years should be screened for lung cancer. They are advised for screening by low dose tomography every year and to stop screening once a person has not smoked for 15 years or has a health problem that can restrict their ability to have a lung surgery. So what is new? The age limit has been revised to 50 to 80 years and the pack years has been reduced from 30 years to 20 years. So how does it help? Screening with low dose CT has shown in multiple trials to reduce the lung cancer mortality and may also reduce the all cause mortality. But there are demerits. They can cause false positive results which can result in unnecessary tests, invasive procedures, over diagnosis and also increases the distress. The lung cancers detected due to screening have been shown to be of lesser stage as we know, most of the cancers of lung that present to our OPD are of stage 3 or stage 4. If you ask me, it would be around 60 to 80 percent of them are stage 3 or stage 4. But in the trials that have been done for lung cancer screening, 60 to 70 percent of the lung cancers are detected in either stage 1 or stage 2. This gives uh, easier options to treat the patient and most of them can be cured with the latest advancements that are happening in lung cancer treatment. So that is one of the benefit of lung cancer screening that the patients that are detected are always mostly of early cancer stage. In spite of having the recommendations in lung cancer screening, the use of lung cancer screening is not very common. Why it's so? There are multi-level barriers. In case of patients, there is the barrier of cost, there is lack of information, there is lack of awareness and also stigma regarding the smoking history, regarding the health, uh, health providers, there is competing demands for time. There is lack of awareness about the benefits of lung cancer screening, nihilism about the treatment of lung cancer in spite of the advancements that has been made. In case of the system barriers, there is lack of support from the uh, healthcare organizations and uh, governments. There is uh, limited resources which has to be utilized for other health related problems. In case of lung cancer treatment, over the years there has been so many progress. In case of adenocarcinoma, as you know, there are multiple mutations that have been defined and they have targetable drugs which are used to increase the life survival of patients. In this cartoon, you can see most of the mutations are still undiscovered, about 31%, followed by KRAS mutations, there is 25%. And the EGFR mutations which were first to be discovered and were having the targeted drugs, they are around 17% and ALK is 3%. There are other mutations like HER2 mutations, MET mutations, etc. Exxon 20 insertion mutations of EGFR has been known to be resistant to the conventional tyrosine kinase inhibitors. This year, FDA has approved poziotinib, it's an inhibitor of Exxon 20 insertions for the treatment naive and also pre-treated non-small cell lung cancer with Exxon 20 insertions. The drug has been tolerated well with the main side effects being skin rash and diarrhea and it has shown about 40 to 50 percent response rates in heavily treated patients. So that's a whole ray of hope for patients who have Exxon 20 insertion mutation. As you know, ALK positive adenocarcinomas are seen in 3% of all adenocarcinomas and crizotinib was the first drug which was approved in this regard. Crizotinib had remarkable responses in ALK positive disease which was not responding well to chemotherapy. After crizotinib, there has been electinib and recently lorlatinib has been approved by US FDA for first line treatment naive ALK positive NSCLC. The trial which had compared lorlatinib with crizotinib showed nearly the double disease-free survival when compared to crizotinib and also had much lesser intracranial uh, disease in patients who were on lorlatinib. The main side effects which are apart from rash and diarrhea is they have changes in the lipid profile. Keras mutation has been one of the most common alterations seen in adenocarcinoma lung and there have been no targeted therapy since long time. Now recently sotorasib has been approved as anti keras agent especially in keras 512c mutations and they have shown remarkable response rates these keras mutated adenocarcinomas are not to be aggressive and not much response to chemotherapy has been elicited so in patients who have failed over at least one line of therapy 
sotorasib has been approved for use in such patients. So to conclude, lung cancer screening by low dose CT is recommended for high risk selected individuals with having history of smoking with more than 20 pack years and between 50 to 80 years and newer targeted agents bring in more hope for lung cancer patients and ultimately the day is not far when most of the patients are being treated on targeted therapy.